Welcome back to part three of God's Love series that we are doing at the moment. And we are so blessed to have you back with us. And today we are going to talk about God's love that is so steadfast. And I'm going to explain to you exactly what he means by saying that. Now, first of all, we have to look at the word steadfast. This word means it is unwavering. It is unfaltering. His love is loyal and faithful. His love is also committed to you and everything surrounding your life and everything that has to do with your life. God is committed to you because he loves you. He's also very persistent in his love towards you. He is resolute. This is what it means. His love is unwavering. It cannot go left or right it was just not move it is just his love is what it is and it will never change it is a deep deep love it is a passion so great that you cannot even with your mind comprehend how deep and how big and how huge is the love of god for you even more than for your family i mean your mother and your father loves you your sisters loves you, your brothers loves you, you love them. But that's a different kind of love. The love of God is so much more, so much deeper than the love that we have for family. So I want to take you to a few scriptures in this session. We're going to go first of all to Exodus chapter 20 verse 6. And this is one of my favorite scriptures in this whole series of God's love to share with you exactly how much he loves you. I want to take you to this one. Now watch, Exodus 20 verse 6 says, But showing mercy and steadfast love, this is God showing mercy to you, showing steadfast love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. This is what God says in that scripture. Man, what an amazing promise from God. I love that scripture. A thousand generations. So what he's saying there is that if you just love him and keep his commandments, his steadfast love will be upon your life into a thousand generations after you. This means your children and their children and their children and their children to a thousand generations. Come on somebody out there. If I was watching this and heard this from somebody, I would jump up and shout for joy right now. What an amazing promise from God. If you love him and you keep his commandments, a thousand generations after you is going to be blessed with the steadfast love of God. What an amazing scripture. Right, let's do another one this morning. Deuteronomy 7 verse 9 says, Know therefore, so there's something you must know. You must sit up straight, give attention, because now God is speaking to you in your heart. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments again to a thousand generations. It's the same scripture as the first one in Exodus. Deuteronomy 7 verse 9 says exactly the same. If you only love your God, His steadfast love will be upon your generations to come after you into thousand times. I mean, what an amazing scripture from God. Even David wrote about the steadfast love of God in the Psalms. And you can find in Psalm 136 verse 27 or 6, 26, he wrote, he says, Give thanks to the God of heaven, for his steadfast love endures forever, forever and ever. His steadfast love. You see, David had this personal relationship with God. David knew what the steadfast love of God was all about. David wanted to express himself to us so that we can understand how amazing is the steadfast love that God has for us. And he wrote about that also in Psalm 86 verse 15. He wrote about the steadfast love of God. He said, you, but you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious and slow to anger and abounding very much much more in steadfast love 
and faithfulness. What an amazing promise from God. David wrote this because he could see through his life how God worked with him, how God treated him, how God opened doors for him, how God blessed him. Even when he was a young man, he was blessed to be king one day. That is the steadfast love of God. And I love this particular scripture in the middle of this verse in Psalm 86 verse 15. He says, God is slow to anger. Man, I tell you, if it had not been for the love of God on our lives, and if he had not been slow to anger, I think we've had a, we would have had a very, very big problem in understanding who is this God that we serve. David writes, he says, you, Lord, you are slow to anger. This is how much he loves us. How many times do we do things wrong? How many times do we make mistakes? How many times do we turn around and say, oh, God, I did it again. Help me, Lord. Get me out of this problem. I've done it again. Lord, help me. You know, sometimes I feel like we use God just like a spare wheel. You know that when you need him, he's there. Because he's got steadfast love. That's his promise from you. Through the scriptures I've given you before this one. But in this Psalm 86 he says he is slow to anger. So even if you do things that are wrong. He's not going to get upset with you right now like we do. I mean somebody look at you skew or strange or say something. We just you know it's like that. And we scream and shout and you know get a hold of each other. And that's how it is in the world today. But God, his love for us is slow to anger. He waits it out. He has patience, so much patience with us before he gets upset about the things that we are doing in our lives. We need to trust God and just know that your word says you are slow to anger. Your word says you are steadfast. Your love says that you will endure forever with us. So we trust you, Lord. For your mercy upon our lives. That's what we need to trust him for. And he is faithful. The word of God says that. Now if you go back to another scripture in the Old Testament. In 2 Chronicles 6 verse 4. Uh, the writer says. O Lord God of Israel. There is no God like you. In heaven or on the earth. You keep covenant and show yourself. Your steadfast love to your servants who walk before you with all their hearts. Come on, somebody. What a beautiful scripture. I love this one. To your servants who walk before you with all their heart. God says he loves you and his love is steadfast. And all you have to do is just do what he expects you to do. Love him with all your heart and love your neighbor like yourself. The very good news of this scripture is that as it was for the Israelites of old, the love of our God is never failing. His love never stops. It never fails. It never doesn't work. It doesn't never work. It always works. His love is always there for us. Psalm 36 verse 7 says, How precious is your steadfast love. Remember in this session we are talking about the steadfast love of God. It's so steadfast that nothing can move it. It is unmovable. He says, Oh God, the children of mankind take refuge in the shadow of your wings. What a beautiful, beautiful way of putting it. We go and hide under the shadow of the wings of God. Now, for somebody that doesn't know what God looks like, I mean, there are scriptures like these in the Bible that tells you exactly who he is. He has wings because he's an angel. You know, every time in the Bible you see the word angel with a capital A, that's the spirit of God. So we take refuge under the shadow of his wings. What good news is this that he's telling us is that Wherever we are and whatever we've done, there is room for us beneath the protection of God. That is how big and how huge the steadfast love of God is for us. And the last one I'm going to leave you with today is Psalm 109 verse 21. He says, But you, O God, my Lord, do not deal on my behalf for your name's sake, because your steadfast love is good. And then he says this one thing, he says, deliver me. I love the way in which David wrote this because he first tells God how amazing he is. He gives him a compliment. He says, 
but God, my Lord, he says, deal on my behalf for your name's sake, because you are a steadfast God, a faithful God, a good God, an amazing God, because your steadfast love is good. And then suddenly, quickly, he just says this one thing, deliver me. It's one thing. The good news about this scripture is that God is ever available. He is there to deliver us. He's there to bring us out. He's there to see us through. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, He will never put something on you that you cannot be, but with that problem, He will also give you the ways and the means out of that thing. Now, Psalm 109 verse 21 says, God is ever available for us. He will deal with us on our behalf because of His name's sake. He is our source of help. He's our source of protection. He will help us in the times of trouble. Do yourself a favor and go and read Psalm 34 and you will see just how much steadfast love is there for you, the child of God, because he's a faithful God. He loves you so much. When you shout or you scream his name, he comes down and help you and save you and deliver you. That is the steadfast love of God. This is part three of the series on the love of God. And until the next time, I hope that you receive something. Remember, God is a faithful God. Until next time, Shalom.